Okay, guys, it's 10 a.m. on a Friday. I am like a 6 out of 10 rested. I did not sleep well last night because I never sleep well when I've got a flight in the morning. I've got a flight at 2 p.m. from Heathrow going to Paris. I'm staying with at my friend's house. He's got a spare bedroom and I really wanted to get out of London for a few days. And it's in Montmartre, which is one of my favourite districts. Um, and... Yeah, I've just, I've nearly packed. I packed last night, which was organised of me at least, so I can stress least less this morning. Ugh, I can't even talk. Um, and yeah, I'm excited and I haven't really got a plan. Like, I just wanted to go to Paris. I've been a few times, so I'm familiar with the city. I've been to the sites, but I wanted to go and just chill and do low-key stuff, but also more local stuff and also eat. Like, do some stereotypical stuff, like I do want to eat a nice croissant and I want a nice coffee. But I'm also just, like, so tired, I just want to chill. But yeah. Finally got to the airport. Security wasn't so bad, but I did buy myself this cute little Lockitan um, hand cream. Just thought I'd treat myself. And also, great for those flights. I don't know about you, but I find like all everything gets dry in the sky. Um, I'm gonna treat myself because I haven't had breakfast and I usually fast, but I've never been to the really posh like caviar house seafood thing. I'm not gonna get any shampoos because I'm not drinking at the moment but I'm gonna get some cute little like either a shrimp cocktail like an avocado and toast vibe from this place love let's do it a little pre-flight feast looks so delicious yum 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 getting my time that was delicious a hundred percent worth the 20 quid I know it's a little bit steep but I just thought, you know what, it's been a bad week, treat myself. <laughs> so annoying now that the UK has left the EU they've made it so much longer and harder for British people to come in in Paris I remember when we could just use the electronic gates and be in in five or six minutes like everybody else and now we have to join the big old line with everyone all passports from all countries and it's like hmm are you punishing us for leaving the EU maybe but hey I'm here in Paris that took 20 minutes longer in security than usual. It's still the end of the Paris Olympics. The main Olympics are finished, but now it, I believe it's the end of the Paralympics. I'm actually here for the weekend of the closing ceremony. Was well, not planned, but I'm excited to see someone told me to go see the Olympic torch. So adding that to my bucket list as we speak. Got that within 10 minutes of getting to security. Massive win. Right, let's get on the metro and get into the city. Apparently there's a new metro line here, the Metro Line 14, which I'm really excited to try, goes direct from the airport, one line into the centre of Paris, dreamy. Let's get on the metro, da 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 da, hey. Next little hurdle, the queue for the Navigo Pass to get on the metro was so long. Again, another 20 minutes, that could have been time saved. If you did a little bit of research, not like me, and downloaded the Navigo app in advance and you can buy your ticket, and you can even buy a reduced airport ticket in advance, which shaves two euros off your journey, every little helps, but you can do it from your phone. I didn't have like signal, Wi-Fi, and by the time I got all through it, I was in the queue, so I just bought the Navigo card. For the Navigo card itself, it's another two euros, but at least you've got a card and it's down to rely on your phone. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, but, finally at m14 this is the map i'm gonna go apparently to madeline to get the 12 because i'm going to 
all the way to Montmartre. Just like that, I'm in Montmartre. That's insane. And it's such nice weather. God, I love Paris. I remember this from when I came here last time. I think Rue Paul Faval is somewhere up there, from what I remember. That is a slice of pizza that I am going for. So I made it to Paris and I'm in this beautiful two bed apartment slash Airbnb in Montmartre. I'm so lucky that I'm staying here for free because a friend that I met here last time I was here a few years ago, um, this is his apartment. He's away for a few days. He said I could stay. So the generosity of strangers keeps on giving. Um, I am exhausted. It is rainy outside. It's a Saturday. I had a super lazy morning just listening to a podcast. Um, I listened to Andre Tukum, which I will link here. And I love him so much. He talks about all forms of practical and modern wisdom, spirituality, but I find it really authentic, super non-preachy and approachable and with an open heart. And it's not kind of just geared towards, you know, like really masculine or straight men, or it's not kind of just for women, it's for everybody. And he just has such a beautiful and really open perspective on these things, which I love. Um, I'm exhausted. I had a really sort of lazy morning and then I went for a wander down. I'm in Montmartre, so I walked down to Pigalle, which is near where the Moulin Rouge is. Um, and I ate lots of things. <laughs> I had an almond croissant, obviously, which I had to. Um, there's a really nice boulangerie here called Le Defre, and it had a tiny little queue, uh, so you could tell the locals loved it. So I had an almond croissant from there, which was amazing and super cheap at one euro fifty, and a really amazing quiche Lorraine, which was so deeply filled and hot and perfect breakfast, and a cheap breakfast. So. That's been really good, but I've had a few kind of thoughts while I've been here. Travel is exhausting and it's really tiring kind of picking your stuff up and going from place to place with it in a suitcase and just being a purposeless tourist. Like I didn't really have much plan here. I just wanted to have a break from London, but also you are just lifting yourself from one location to another. I know that instinctively, yeah, here I still am. So I guess maybe that's my lesson. But also, um, every city has its own things. Like the place is only as good as the people. And I'm in the most beautiful city and it's got, I've got every museum on my doorstep and all the things that I want to do. And yet, you know, I'm here on my own, which is fine. But I really have to come to terms and remember again that I'm here on my own. And that's not like a bad thing. It's just remembering how to be in your own company.
So I've just had my second night here in Paris and all I can say is what a difference 24 hours makes. Like my first night here, I really wasn't feeling it. I just thought, what am I doing here? And it's normal to feel that original bout of loneliness, but I really, really felt like I was in the wrong place and I was just like, I'm exhausted. Why am I doing this? I'm gonna go home. And yet 24 hours later, I had an amazing, spontaneous, you know, walk in the city. I met a really, really nice chap who told me to go to the Bourse de Commerce. I looked on the maps. It said that it closed. I thought I'd go and walk around there anywhere, discovered the beautiful Royal Palace and the gardens. And then I just decided to walk to Bourse de Commerce and then I got there and it was open late and it was also free the first Saturday of every month. I did not realize that it wasn't planned, had the most amazing time. And if you guys are here, you should definitely check out the Bourse de Commerce. It's so cool. Um, and then I, you know, my body was exhausted. I was tired, I'm dealing with um, you know, kind of like residual effects of depression, anxiety and fatigue from long COVID. And I just decided to push on and was like, um, gently push myself just one step, one step at a time. And I was like, I'm in the center of Paris on a Saturday night. It's one of the best cities in the world. Just go out there and explore. I went to La Marais, I had a beer. I'm not drunk in a long time. And I really enjoyed myself. I was talking to people. I was enjoying just kind of being here. And it just put such a smile on my face, seeing people from all walks of life, people that are in all different kind of states and stages um, doing their thing. And it was so life affirming. And I met another really nice person and we had a really, really nice chat. We came back to the Airbnb and just had a few drinks. And it's just, it, I woke up with a massive smile on my face thinking it's going to be fine and it's funny what putting yourself out there slightly does it just changes you and it's all about people not places so a few things from this one uh, even though we think that we're thinking logically we're going you know with our intuition try not to make decisions emotionally and try not to make any rash decisions sit on it for at least 24 hours possibly two days and just judge out how you feel. It could all turn around so quickly. I'm loving staying here, you know, for now. It's really, really fun. So, you know, remember that, um, you know, we are emotional creatures and not to kind of act on those emotions right away. Uh, number two is like, don't isolate yourself, connect and push yourself out of your comfort zone. I kind of became uh, subconsciously in this really, fear-based mindset and it's crazy you know keeping myself very safe all the time and also thinking that everyone's gonna scam me everyone's out to get me everyone's got bad intentions which comes from you know society the news but also my mum and it's very interesting you know I always thought I was very adventurous and open-minded but over the years especially over the pandemic I did become really kind of fear-based I was like don't talk to people they're gonna hurt you or there's things that are you know, out there and kind of, you know, people out to get you. <laughs> and I think that's a really sad way to live your life. And there is a balance, obviously, be vigilant and use your common sense and protect yourself first, but also open yourself up to a little bit. You've got to live and part of living is making mistakes. And if you do it sensibly and within a kind of, you know, a, a kind of frame of like, I'm not going to harm myself, but the thing is living and putting yourself out there and being adventurous comes with a little bit of risk and you've got to risk a little bit to live and if you're playing it safe all the time are you really living so here's to my third day in paris it is gray but it's like you know there's a little bit of sunny intervals i don't really know what i've got planned i've just had a nice coffee on the balcony um i want to hit up the rooftop on gallery lafayette for sure maybe go to the musee d'orsay because i still haven't been but i also just want to like hang out I also want to find some good thrift shops. So guys, I'd love for you to come with me and let's have a really fun day on a Sunday in Paris. It's also the closing ceremony for the Paralympics. So let's do this. <laughs> Thank you.